Hello students. Today we're going to look at answering all of your homework problems, but the thing that you have to keep in mind, I'm giving you the answers now. If you write down just the answers, I'm not going to give you any credit for it. What you have to do is show the process of how we get those answers. You have to be able to express how we come up with the answers to these problems. All right? The process is every bit, if not more important, than the product. All right? So we're going to use this worksheet right here. And I'm going to put this off the screen in just a moment so that way we have a little more workspace. You follow along on yours and uh, we'll be good to go. So question one. Question one is that you have... 42 mil centimeters, and we have to put this into uh, inches, all right? So 2.54 centimeters is the equivalent of one inch, all right? Now, this is what we call the conversion factor. That's a known quantity, all right? It's an equivalent to each other, like one foot equals 12 inches. Well, 2.54 centimeters is one inch, so, in the uh, video that you just watched, they set it up like this. They put a times, and then they put a division symbol here, okay? And what they did was they said, all right, well, here is centimeters, here is centimeters, and you have to cross-cancel these. Now, this is the problem with the way that the, the video showed you how to do this. See, what happens if you put this centimeters right at the very bottom of your line, well, you could maybe make the mistake when you cross cancel this that you see this on the bottom, so that means that this thing has to go up top. But that's not right. We don't want to do it that way. All right, so a better way to do this than to put in a times and a division symbol is to use what's called the bookshelf. The bookshelf method, right as soon as you write down that first value, okay, right as soon as you write down that first value, what you want to do is just put a nice straight line across and then put a line down. So that way you know that the first number that you put in goes right up top left. It has to start that way. There is no other option, okay? You got to start it out like that. Now, we do it this way. It's the same idea. We'd have a, a times right here, and then we'd have our division symbol. The only thing is, is that when you're using the bookshelf method, it forces you to put things in the correct places. Now we're looking at cross-canceling, and we don't have to worry about that I put it in the right spot. See, if I bring that down, if I have my value in the numerator, that means that my conversion factor has to go in the denominator. So this is my conversion, centimeter, right? Centimeter, do, 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 right down, right like that. That means the rest of the conversion factor has to go on top. So we'll punch those numbers into the calculator. You have 42 divided by uh, 2.54, that comes out to be 16.5, we'll round it off there, inches. Okay, we go number two. Now, the first couple I'm going to go kind of slow on, and then after that, we'll speed things up. You have number two, you have 50 milliliters that you're going to convert to liters. So you start with the number given to you, 50 milliliters, and you have to have a conversion. So there's 1,000 mill, milliliters in one liter. Okay, bookshelf time. Put this in. If you like it, I don't care. You can put this in afterwards, but I want the bookshelf written down. We need to cross cancel things. Milliliter is in the numerator, so to cross cancel it, I need to put milliliter from the conversion factor in the denominator. The one liter is the remaining portion that has to go in the numerator, then, like that. Okay, we punch that into the calculator, 50 divided by 1,000, come up with 0 0.050 liters. Okay, we're going to go to question 3. Question 3 says that you have 285 grams that you're going to start with. So 285 grams, 
and we need to convert it to pounds. Well, one pound equals 454 grams. All right, bookshelf time. We draw our bookshelf across. If it makes you feel happy, you can put in the times and then the uh, division symbol, but I want the bookshelf. So we have to match up our units, grams. I see grams. If the grams is in the numerator at first, that means that the conversion factor, grams has to go in the denominator. The rest of the conversion factor has to go like that, okay? So we're going to uh, multiply and divide that out. 285 divided by 454 comes out to be 0 0.63 pounds in our calculator. Number four. Number four, let's put it right here. We'll go four. You have uh, how many seconds are in three days? So you have three days like this. And I'm going to put my line across right here. And the reason why I drew this one a little bit longer is because I don't know how many I, I don't know how many seconds are in a day, all right? And we're not going to Google it. You're going to have to work it out yourself. So I do know that one day has 24 hours. And we have one hour equals uh, oops, 60 seconds. And then 60 minutes. What am I doing? We have 60 minutes. And then one minute has 60 seconds with it. So conversion factor time, we've got days. I see days down here. So that means that this portion is gonna go here and then the rest of it is gonna go up top. Now that's one of them, okay? That doesn't get me the answer, it just gets me one part of it. So I have to get rid of the hours now. I see hours here. So to cross cancel hours out, Hours goes on bottom, minutes will go on top. And then the last part, the last part here, I need to get rid of minutes. I see minutes right here. So that means that I'm going to take my minutes, put it down here, and my seconds, I'm going to put it up top. Okay. So a way that you could have maybe simplified this, and I was starting to do it at first and caught myself, if you have one hour and you know that there's 3,600 seconds in an hour, you could have shortened it up and gotten this replaced with the, it'd be one hour on the bottom, 3,600 seconds on the top. So this portion that I have indicated, we could have gotten rid of those last two, and then use that only. You'll get the same answer, all right? Different conversions, same equivalencies. So let's plug that into the calculator. You have three times 24 times 60 times 60. That is going to come up with uh, 259,200 seconds is what that's gonna be. All right, we have question five. Question five. You have 56,000 seconds, and we need to figure out how many days that is, okay? So let's use this conversion. We'll have 3,600 seconds equals one hour, and then we have one day equals 24 hours, all right? We'll put in the bookshelf. Since we had to have two conversions there, that means I'm going to have two spots that I'm going to put information. I started with seconds, seconds is right here. So I will need to put this in the denominator to cross cancel what was in the numerator. The rest of that goes on the other side of it. Then you need to change out hours, you need to cross cancel that, so hours is here. So to get rid of hours, 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 they cross cancel. The rest of that would go in the numerator right here, okay? So we're ready to plug that into the calculator. You have 56,000 seconds divided by 3,600. You can hit the equals, 
divided by 24 equals, and you come up with 0 0.65 days, all right? Number six, number six, you have, you are 2.3 meters tall. And it's saying that it wants you to figure out how many inches tall you are. Well, one meter is the equivalent of 39.37 inches. Okay. So, put the bookshelf in. Then we start looking at cross-canceling units. Meter. Meter. So that means that I'm going to put this in the denominator to cross-cancel. The rest of this goes in the numerator. I'm going to multiply those two values together. 90.55 inches, and we're done. We have number seven. Number seven says you have a flea wing, and it weighs zero point. We've got to add up our zeros. We have one, two, I need to, let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five zeros. So one, two, three, four, five zeros. Seven, zero, three pounds. So that's a Really lightweight object there. Okay, and it says that it wants that in milligrams, and it gives you the conversions. One pound equals 454 grams. And then it says that uh, one gram equals 1,000 milligrams. Okay, so conversion factor time. I need my bookshelf in here. I had two conversions, so two spots. I have pounds up top. That means that I have to match that, put the conversion factor in the bottom. The rest of that conversion factor has to go in the top. Now you go to the next one. You have grams. You need to get rid of it. So we have grams down below. We match them up. Cross cancel. The rest of this goes in the numerator. Okay. So we're going to multiply this into the cal or put this into the calculator. Uh, you multiply it all up together. You got point zero 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 seven zero three times four fifty four times a thousand, and you should get three point three milligrams. Okay. Let's go to question number eight. Question eight now. Question eight. You need to convert one point two times ten to the second nanometers to kilometers all right so nanometers if we have one meter that's the equivalent of one times ten to the ninth nanometers and then one kilometer equals a thousand meters so we put our bookshelf in there's two conversions we had so we need to have two spots I find nanometer, I find nanometer, so that means I use that to cross cancel. So this goes here, and the rest of it goes up top. Now I need to get rid of the meters. Meter here, meter here, so that's going to get cross canceled, and the rest of it goes up top. What we're ready to do is we're ready to plug that into the calculator. You have 1.2 times 10 to the second. And you know what? Since this one has the scientific notation, let's, uh, let's actually show how this is going to look on the calculator. So you have 1.2 E, or EE, -E, 2. We're going to go divided by 1 EE -E 9. I'm going to hit equals. And then we're going to go divided by 1,000 equals so 1.2 times 10 to the negative 10th right so 1.2 times 10 to the negative 10th kilometers is what you should have for your answer so we have number nine number nine you have 5.66 what is that centimeters we're going to change that to meters so one meter equals a hundred centimeters there's only one conversion that was in here, so I'm going to have one spot on my bookshelf. So we have centimeters, centimeters right here. So to cross-cancel, 
I'll put that in the bottom. The rest of it goes up top. All right, we put that into the calculator. We uh, divide that out, and you come up with 0 0.0566 meters is what you're going to have. Number 10. Number 10, we have convert 15 kilometers to yards. So you have 15 kilometers. So for 15 kilometers to yards, I did look this one up because this isn't one that I just had memorized. So you have one kilometer equals 1,093.61 yards. Now we could have changed uh, kilometers to meters, then meters to inches and inches to yards, but I, I just was a little lazy. Okay, so we'll have our one conversion here. I find kilometers, I have kilometers, so that means that to cross cancel it, this value has to go in the bottom, and the rest of it has to go up top. I'll multiply that together, and you come up with 1694.15 yards. So, uh, number 11. Number 11, we have 138 pounds, and you're going to have to convert that to kilograms. Okay, so if you have one kilogram, that's the equivalent of 2.2 .2 pounds. Just a little bit extra onto that, but that'll be okay for this. So our pounds here, we match it up. So this value will go in the denominator to cross cancel, and the rest goes in the numerator like that. We'll do the math, and we should come up with 62.7 kilograms. Okay. We'll go to the next one, number 12. Number 12, you have convert 25.0 25 liters to liters. Let's change that. Let, let's say we're going we're gonna to change that to milliliters. So we have one liter equals... 1,000 milliliters, okay? One conversion, one spot on the bookshelf. Liter to liter, that means that this gets put in the denominator and the rest of this gets put in the numerator, okay? We'll multiply this thing out. So you have two, five, one, two, three milliliters, okay? We have number 13, number 13. Number 13, it says you need to convert 8.4 times 10 to the 12th millimeters to miles. So, first thing, we need to figure out a conversion to get rid of the millimeters. So, one meter, we all know that that's 1,000 millimeters. And in track, I know this number by heart, we have one, me one mile equals... now. The track people, you'll be like, oh, it's 1,600, but it's actually not 1,600. Uh, in track, a mile, four laps, isn't a true mile because a true mile is 1,609 meters. So you're not running really a mile in track. Okay. We had two conversions that we see here, so two spots on my bookshelf. First one, millimeter, millimeter. So that value is going to be put in the denominator. The rest will be put in the numerator. I need to get rid of the meters now. So the meters, meters right here. So that means that we're going to put this in the denominator to cross cancel. And the rest of it gets put in the numerator like that. All right, we have calculator time. And since we have scientific notation, we're going to see how that is actually going to look. So we have 8.4, press the EE button, 12. We're going to go divided by 1,000. I always say equals, divided by 1609 equals. All right, so you might look at this and be like, oh, that's a really big number. That can't be right. But consider that you're going from uh, 
millimeters to miles, and we have that exponent of times 12. So that's going to be a, a pretty decent sized number. So our answer is 5,220.633. Miles like that. Okay? All right. Let's move on. You have number 14 now. Number 14. We've got airline charges 16 cents per mile. How far can you go with eight, 80 bucks? So we have $80 here and we get 16 cents. per one mile, like that. All right, now we do need the conversion. That $1 equals 100 cents, like this. So two conversions, two spots on the bookshelf. All right, I have dollars at first, so I match up dollars. Okay, I'll put that in the denominator. The rest of that then gets put in the numerator. You have the next part, you have cents. Where is cents? Cents is right here. So I'm going to put that in the, as soon as I get all of it, in the denominator, and then the rest of it gets put in the numerator. So you have 80 times 100 divided by 16. You're going to get 500 miles out of that 80 bucks. We have number 15. 15. It says you have a runner that covers 100 yards in 10 seconds. So you have a numerator and a denominator that we're going to have to convert here. It says, what is her speed in miles per hour? All right, so if we're looking at uh, converting those, those uh, miles to yards, if we look that up, we have one mile is the equivalent of 1,760 yards, okay? And then the second, we have, let's say one hour equals 3,600 seconds to make it fast for us, all right? So two conversions, two spots on the bookshelf, all right? And this one, let's start by getting rid of this seconds first, just to make it a little different. Now. If the seconds is in the denominator, that means to cross cancel it, I'd have to put it in the numerator. And the rest of it here, the rest of this goes in the denominator. Now we want to get rid of the yards. So I find yards and then I put that cross canceled in the denominator and the rest of it gets put in the numerator like this. I punch it into the calculator we have, and I'm going to show you this one just because I know that some people get uh, thrown off when you have the numbers all over the place. So this is what I do. I go 100, I multiply the stuff across the top, 3,600 equals, divided by 10 equals, divided by 1760 equals, you have 20. She's running at 20.5. Four five miles per hour. And you might think, oh, that seems pretty fast. She's not running the constant speed at that. That's her maximum speed. Okay. And that's possible. We have number 16. 16, you have 250,000 miles. And it says from the Earth to the Moon, if you travel at a speed of 650 miles per one hour, uh, how many weeks is it going to take? Well, we need to also have our time frame in weeks. So there's 24 hours in one day, and there's seven days in one week. All right, three conversions. Three spots on the bookshelf. So we'll go right like that. Oh, one more. So we have three. Now, cross canceling, I have miles. Miles is here. So that value gets cross canceled by putting it in the denominator. The rest of it then goes in the numerator. 
You've got to get rid of the hours now. So hours, I find hours down below. Hours is right here. So we will cross cancel that, leaving the one day to go on top. Now you have to get rid of the days. You have to get rid of the days. So I find days in my conversion factor and we'll cross cancel it and the rest goes up top. Okay, so again, how do you plug this in the calculator? Because you got numbers everywhere. 250, 000. zero, zero. We're going to divide that by 650 equals divided by 24 equals divided by 7 days equals. Uh, that's going to be 2. Point, 2. Point, uh, what's that going to be? Rounded off 2.29 weeks. Okay, and then you've got your answer. All right, a couple more. We have number 17. 17. New Mexico is 1,440 miles from Chicago. How far is that in centimeters? Well, they give you the conversions. You have one mile equals, they give you this in uh, kilometers, 1.61. So they rounded it off. Actually, it should be uh, this right here, but we'll go with what they had. Okay. Kilometers. And it says that you have one kilometer equals a thousand meters. And then we know that one meter equals 100 centimeters. All right. I'm just going to double check and it does want it in centimeters. So we're good. So three spots, three conversions. Put those in. All right. Uh, we have mile. I find mile down below. So that's there. So it gets cross canceled. So it goes in the denominator. The rest of that goes in the numerator. Now I have to get rid of the kilometer. So I find kilometer down below. And I'm going to put that in to cross cancel. The rest of it goes in the numerator. If I grab it all. Whoa. If we put that right there. And then we have the last part. You have meters, I find meter, and then I put that in to cross cancel, like that. Okay, if I put that all into the calculator, what I'm going to come up with is 2316960000 centimeters. So you're going to have that distance from Chicago to New Mexico. Now, last one. We have number 18, 18, we have 15 kilometers per liter, all right? Now, what we need to change is from liters to quarts, so we need a conversion here. So our liter, one liter, is going to be the equivalent of 1.06 quarts, and then if we have four quarts, that's supposed to be a four, equals one gallon, so that's going to be our conversions for our vol for our volumes. Now, if we look at one mile, it's the equivalent of 1.609 kilometers. So we're going to plug these in. So we have our bookshelf here. And let's start by canceling out those kilometers. So kilometers, I match it up, cross-canceling. The remainder of that conversion factor goes in the numerator. We then put in the second conversion. We need to get rid of the liters. So I find liters here. Cross cancel. Denominator to numerator. The rest of that goes in the denominator here. We have one last conversion. The last conversion, we need to change the quarts. I have four quarts. We'll put that up top. And then we have one gallon. We put this down here. And I don't know the right answer right off the top of my head, so let's plug it in. We have 15 times 4 equals, you got 60, divided by what's on the bottom, 1.609 equals. And then we're going to divide that by 1.06 equals. So our gas mileage here is going to be, let's just round it off and say, uh, 35 miles per
per gallon because all of the other units have canceled out. Liter, liter, kilometer, kilometer, quartz, quartz. And the only two things you're left with is miles on the top, gallons on the bottom. Okay? What you have to have for your homework is everything that we just wrote down on the board. Okay? If you don't do that, you're not going through the whole process of showing the work, you won't get the credit. All right? If you have questions, make sure that you ask. We are going to do a lot of factor labeling or uh, converting uh, units around this year. So this is a skill that you're going to have to master. Okay? All right. Take care.